Hello, this is Ms. Pack from San Luis Public Library. This week in Science Scouts, we're going to learn about telling time the way they did a long time ago, using the sun. Today's book is going to be Tell the Time with Thomas by Christopher Audrey. And you all know what that is, right? At seven o'clock, Thomas starts out on his first journey of the day with Annie and Clarabelle. And this says seven. At eight o'clock, Sir Topham Hatt catches a train to work. This train is pulled by James, the red engine. Well, for eight o'clock, it has to look like that. Sir Topham Hatt reaches his office by nine o'clock. He has a cup of coffee before he starts to read the pile of letters waiting for him. Nine o'clock. Notice my hour hand keeps moving. From his window, Sir Topham Pack can see Gordon, the big engine, ready to pull the express. At 10 o'clock, the conductor blows his whistle and waves his flag, and Gordon starts off down the line. He does that at 10 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, Percy collects some freight trains. As he passes the airfield, he toots hello to Harold, the helicopter. It's 11 o'clock. Thomas arrives at the junction at 12 o'clock noon. Henry, the green engine, is at the next platform. So noon is when both hands are up like that. Toby and Henrietta have had a busy morning. At one o'clock, Toby stops for a drink of water. His driver and fireman have some sandwiches and tea. So it's at one o'clock. Edward is taking some children to the seaside at two o'clock. As he puffs down the line, his driver waves to Trevor, the traction engine. Trevor is sawing logs in the orchard. It's gonna be at two o'clock. At three o'clock, Henry is on time and going well until he comes to a fault in the track. Thomas comes to his rescue with the breakdown train. Poor Henry, now he will be late. It's supposed to be three o'clock, right? At four o'clock, Bertie the bus brings some passengers to the station. Thomas takes the people on to town. His coaches are very full. Oop, too far. It's four o'clock. At five o'clock, Thomas makes his last journey before going into the shed for the night. By six, so that's at five o'clock. That's his last journey. By six o'clock, all the engines are asleep. You guys probably are not asleep by six o'clock. Right, but you notice how the hands moved? Well, mostly this is the minute hand, so he really didn't move because we were just talking about the hour hands. But the hour hand had to keep moving as the day went on, right? So we're going to talk about how people used to tell time before clocks. Like they used to use the sun. And we have one of these in Front Royal. Right? Do you know that this picture tells time? Do you, can you tell what time it is? Right, so this is down by the gazebo and the old caboose. You can't really see this picture too well, but this is a silhouette of a Indian in a canoe. Notice the shadow, because that's the important part. Right? The shadow is what we're going to use to tell time. Right? It is believed that was a sundial, and it's believed that the sundial originated or started when the early humans noticed that there's 
uh, changes in their shadow during the day. So if you look at this picture, this guy is just standing one spot all day, right? And in the morning, the sun's over here. So his shadow is over here, right? On his left side, your right side. That's the morning. And then as the sun went up higher and higher to noon, right above his head, notice the shadow got really tiny and now it's in front of him. And then the sun started going down. So it's coming from this side, which means his shadow's on this side now and it's long again. Okay, so from the morning, it started long. It got short, shorter, a little bit bigger, bigger again. Okay, so the position changed and the size of the shadow changed and people started using the sun to figure out what time it was. Okay, if the shadow was long and it points to the west, that was the morning. Okay. Shadow was the shortest at noon because the sun is right over their head. So it wasn't really casting a really big shadow because you're kind of standing on your shadow then. And then if the shadow of the stick was long and pointed to the east, it was the evening. Okay. That's because the sun's going to come up in the east in the morning. Sun comes up in the east. Cast the shadow this way in the morning. So that means your shadow's going towards the west. That's the way the sun is going to go. And the sun's going to go down in the west. Hit that stick and cast a really long shadow towards the east. But notice the size of the shadows. Okay, especially this noon one right here. Okay, so a sundial is an instrument. It has a pole. The pole has a special name. It's called a gnomon in its center, and it has markings that tell the time just like a clock does. Okay, when the sun shines on the gnomon or on the pole, shadows are cast and they appear at different places. Now this one has Roman numerals. So you guys are probably very used to, there's a 12, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and this would be noon. So let's look at where this one is pointing. Okay, the shadow is pointing on the three. So this is somewhere around three. It's not exactly on the three, so it might be a few minutes after three. Okay, the number that the shadow lines up with is what time it is, right? So if it lines up with the three, it's 3 p.m. If it falls in between, somewhere in between those two hours, right? It tells you if it falls in between the eight and the nine, it's probably about 8.30. So let's look at this one. This one is falling in between the two and the three. It's probably about 2.30. So this one wants to know what direction is the sun coming from? And they got four suns. That doesn't mean they're all right. Because this can only be one sun, right? But let's look at his shadow. His shadow is going this way. So do you think the sun's going to be on this side? And hit him and bounce back? Or is it going to be above him? Or is it going to be in front of him? Or is it going to be on the right side? And I hope you all pick this one because this is the way the sun is going to go. It's going to go this way. He blocks the sunlight. And that's what makes the shadow. Okay, so it's coming from this side. So if you guys come in, you're going to get a kit. It's going to have a plate and a straw. And what you guys need to do is take your plate, figure out where the center is. All right, so hopefully you know you know, let's not just poke holes. We know this isn't the center. So we're kind of going right around here, right? You can take a pen, you can ask for help. Maybe somebody else will take a scissor or something, just something sharp and just poke a hole right in your plate, okay? So you can see I poked a hole right here. You can even take a pencil. Now try not to make it too big because we're giving you a very hard straw, okay? It's a very hard straw. 
And what we're gonna do is now I do have to make this a little bit bigger because it's not going through. So I do, I know I have to make it a little bit bigger. But I wanna put the straw right there in, so it's gonna stand up, okay? But I'm actually not gonna to wanna to do it going this way because then I'm gonna have a hard time putting my sundial down, right? If I put my thing through, see how that comes out the bottom? Then my thing will be kind of lopsided, right? So I have some extra room this way. We're gonna put it down from this side because then if it sticks out, right? And you can see it's sticking out. It's okay because this one has a little bit of a rim. Okay, then you're gonna put it outside. Now I would suggest you start this in the morning, okay? Preferably as close to an hour as you can. So eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning. And what you're going to do, set it up outside and maybe put a rock on it. Okay, just to keep it from blowing away because we don't want it to move. Just one rock, that's all you gotta do. And I want you to see what it looks like here. Okay. Now, I don't, I'm not outside right now, but I do have a light right above me. So you can kind of see this small shatter right here. Because this is about noon. It actually is about noon that I'm doing this. And what you'll do is you'll go out. So if it's noon, you can just draw that line right where that shadow is. I get my pen to work and I got to get out of my, my ship. I got to make sure this is standing up straight. Okay. Right. And I can draw my, my line. I can go out as far as I want. I can go, I can go all the way to the end if I want. Right? Or I could just do what my shadow is. And then I could see that the different sizes of the shadow. And at the end of it, right now I'm moving my thing, so it's going to change a little bit. Notice I can you can see the line now over here. My shadow is here, but my line's here. So I can actually fix that right now and go that way. And I can write 12 o'clock here, or I can take my line all the way to the end and say 12 p.m., okay? Then at one o'clock, I gotta go back out. I am not moving this, I'm leaving this outside, hopefully with a rock on it. Hopefully nobody hits my stick. And I'm gonna find out later on, my shadow's gonna be over here and it might be a little longer. I haven't moved my plate or my stick, but my time, my shadow is gonna change. And I draw another line and I'll write one o'clock. And then at two o'clock, I can go out. You could do this now, if you don't have a plate, if you don't have a plate and a stick, and you just wanna do this outside with chalk, you can go outside and stand, right? Draw a little circle, wherever you wanna do, a sidewalk or the driveway or something and you stand there and you face in the same direction, okay? It could be towards a car, towards the street, towards your house, same direction. Go out at noon and have somebody trace your shadow. And then at one o'clock, go outside, stand in the same spot, facing the same direction and have somebody trace your shadow again. And notice your shadow is moving, okay? It's getting bigger or smaller. And it's not in the same direction anymore. And if you did that for about 10 hours, each hour go outside, you're going to have half of a clock. Now, we can't tell time at nighttime with a sundial. Anybody know why? We can't see the sun, can we? So there are no shadows that we can trace for the sun time. So this sundial is only good for telling time during the day. 
it's also very hard to do during rainy days. And if it starts to rain, you might have to kind of bring your sundial in and finish doing the time some other time, okay? But hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys have fun watching your shadows. Maybe being able to tell the time by the sun. If you know the sun's on that side, is it morning or afternoon versus when it's on the other side? Notice how big your shadows are at noon. And if you really want a trick, I'm going to ask you one. Look at the trees on two sides of the road next time you go down the road at noon. So if the sun is at noon, it's right above your head at noon. What side are the shadows on? Are those trees. With these trees and these trees. And you come in and tell me. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.